So today we're talking about practice. Specifically, we're talking about a beginner's practice routine that'll help get newer players up to speed. This video is great if Ultimate is your first Smash game and you want to beat your friends, or if you've never played Smash competitively and you want to start, or if you just want a good regimen to help reinforce the fundamentals. You might get some use out of this video if you're an advanced player. After all, fundamentals are always important and even the pros miss simple techniques even now and then, but you might get more mileage from our videos on advanced tech. You might also get more from the one-on-one -on -one coaching or the MKLeo course that we offer on ProGuides.com. So, if you're looking for even more ways to level up, be sure to check out ProGuides.com. Getting good at Smash can feel a bit like learning a new language. When you're starting out, it's not too hard to memorize the basics like what each button does or how most specials work. But then, you realize those basics don't take you very far. And when you watch people who are fluent in Smash, it's like a whole new game full of all sorts of things you don't get. And of course, practice is the way to get more fluent in Smash or language. So consider this video the Level 1 Smash Workbook. Just try not to let this one gather dust in the attic. If there's a core building block to the Smash language, it's movement. When you just get started with Smash, a lot of its depth is hard to see, especially with movement. But there's so much nuance to movement that a seasoned player will move faster than a new one, even if the newbie is playing a much faster character. We're gonna start with two aspects of the game that will up your speed right away, fast falling and short hopping. In a traditional fighter, movement is ground-based and going to the air is secondary. Jumping is as important to Smash as it is to basketball, so how quickly you jump and fall back to the ground influences how quickly you play. You'll get back to the ground a lot faster if you fast fall. You can fast fall by pulling the left stick down when your character reaches the apex of their jump. Simple as this technique is, this drastically increases how quickly your character moves through the air. Fast falling can feel different on each character and takes a while to get down on new characters. So, when you practice it, be sure to pick a character you like or want to play. In general, you should pick one character grind. Fast falling is one of the easier smash techs to perform in practice. Just go to final destination or a flat section of the training stage, jump, and pull the control stick down when the character reaches the top of the jump. You'll know you got it if you see a purple star appear near your character's head. Take 5 to 10 minutes to jump, then fast fall, trying to be as consistent as you can, performing as many fast falls in a row as you can. You can also fast fall after using your up special. For characters who don't use their up special often, this might not be too important, but for characters who do use it, especially on stage, fast falling the up special can save your stock. Since you're helpless after using a lot of up specials, fast falling means your opponent has much less time to chase you and hit you. So if you got a good up beat, <laughs> Lucina, <laughs> then uh, take another five minutes to practice fast falling after your up special. We start with the fast fall because it's the easiest and least stressful thing. It's a nice, solid building block. Now, we're gonna get to the more complex and important building block, the short hop. Every character has two types of jump, a short and full hop. The short hops is just what it sounds like, the shorter hop, but it's surprisingly important and tough to execute. It's important because it lets you hit grounded opponents with your powerful aerials and opens up a ton of options. It's tough because you have to let go of the button you press to jump within a fraction of a second to do it. When your jump animation starts, you have three frames, or 3 sixtieths of a second, to let go of the jump button. Otherwise, your character will do a full hop instead. Nintendo did make short hops a bit easier by letting you input an attack while jumping to instantly short hop aerial. They also let you press X and Y at the same time to do a short hop. However, the two button option is clumsy and can lead to missed inputs. Meanwhile, inputting an attack means you can't control your momentum as well, which hurts spacing. Even worse, you can't control when you'll attack during your jump, so you'll always be doing rising aerials. That's rough because rising aerials can miss small or ducking opponents. So the best way to short hop is still the hard way. By clicking the button for a fraction of a second, the best way to practice short hopping is to spend 15 to 20 minutes just doing it the hard way. We recommend going to Battlefield, FD, or the training map, and start by short hopping in place. Try to short hop as many times in a row as you can. At the start, it's going to be tough to do even 10 in a row, but you want to keep this up until you get consistent. Think 20 to 30 short hops in a row. If you're really struggling with the short hop, there are a few things you can do. One is to remap your controls. Ultimate gives a ton of options to change up the control schemes. For some people, clicking the X button to jump is super hard. For others, using tap jump leads to broken joysticks and missing inputs due to buffering jumps. In those cases, you can use a shoulder button to jump. 
These are the easiest buttons to remap because there are three or four of them dedicated to just two options. You've got a lot of places you can map jump to. The shoulder buttons are also pretty easy to flick too. Another thing you can do is think of the button like a hot stove. Your goal is to have as little contact with it as possible, so think of the motion as less of a press and more of a flick. It can help to whip your thumb or finger out of the way of the button as you hit it. If you're still having trouble, legendary pro player Leffen recommends starting light and making your touch heavier until you gradually get the short hop. When you start getting 10 short hops in a row, you should start building in fast falls. If you feel comfortable, you can build in fast falls even earlier. Fast falling your short hops is pretty cool to do too. You get a glimpse of how fast the game can be played. That's the pace of competitive Smash. But Smash isn't competitive jumping, you're not going to need to move. And believe it or not, just moving before you short hop can mess up your timing. For the next exercise, run a short distance and short hop. Just focus on running and short hopping for 5 minutes. Then spend another 5 to 10 minutes building the fast fall in. As you move, fast falling gets trickier because it's harder to see where the apex of your jump is. So look out, let the purple star guide you. It might get dull just running, jumping, and fast falling. So you're here to play Smash, not virtual track and field. When that happens, start to play with the momentum and aerial drift a little. You can run forward, short hop, then pull back. That motion's great for launching safer retreating aerials. You can also run forward, then jump back, either doing a backflip or a forward-facing backwards hop. There's a ton of ways to move in Smash, and that's what makes the game more fun the more you play. It's like leveling up your gameplay actually unlocks extra levels. We'll get more into backflips and microspacing in later, guys, but as beginners, it's best to start slow. You might want to go straight to the advanced stuff, but since Smash is like a language, that's kind of like learning how to say thermonuclear in Spanish before you learn how to say, hey, how are you? Okay, now that we've built in all this jumping and moving, we gotta build in attacking. Yes, it's finally time to hit stuff. Well, sort of. It's time to hit the air, I guess. It's super important to fast fall your aerials so you land and get through your lag faster. That means you want to spend time throwing out an aerial and fast falling it. So for this exercise, you should short hop, aerial, then fast fall. If you're really new to Smash, it's good to spend a nice chunk of time on basics like this and go 15 to 30 minutes. It seems like a lot, but you'll find a lot of nuance in just the timing. Some fastball timings mean you only do one hit of a move. Some timings make the move disappear. All that stuff matters. But it can be tough to keep at the exercises because it's repetitive. So to mix it up, try a few different aerials. Try to short hop, neutral air, fast fall first. Try doing that five times before switching to short hop, forward air, fast fall five times. Then back air, down air, and up air. Cycle through them and increase the reps to increase your consistency. Go from 5 to 10 to 10 to 15. If you're feeling really consistent or honestly just bored, you can build in dashing and run, short hop, aerial, fast fall. You might think that sounds way easy and just as simple, but every little element you add to the scenario also adds difficulty. So don't be surprised if even just running throws you off of your hops. When you do these drills, we recommend setting your C-Stick to Tilt. Using Tilt Stick instead of Smash Stick will make most characters easier to play and make aerial inputs easier too. Instead of having to click the A button and move the left stick, you just have to move the C-Stick. If Smash is a platform fighter, then we can't talk training without talking platforms. Whether in tournament or in quick play or at home with your friends, you'll probably play with platforms. They're so important to the game that we've got a whole video on them. Link in the description. Moving on platforms is like trying to pay your bills or talk to your bank or government over the phone. Surprisingly tricky, especially in Ultimate. Since you can't roll off platforms and you can sometimes duck on the platform instead of falling through, it can be hard to get off them. If you're bad at platform movement, you may end up taking unnecessary hits or throwing yourself into disadvantage just to get off. So, you want to practice platforms too. After your basic drills, go to Battlefield and practice these three things. Short hopping and up airing under a platform. Full hopping and fast falling through a platform. And full hop landing on the platform then, quickly dropping through. Try each exercise for just a few minutes to get a better feel for how platforms work. That should help you out with your accidental platform teabagging. All right, before we finally leave the air and come down to Earth, we gotta talk B reverse recoveries. You ever get hit off stage, not know that you are facing away from the ledge, and you use your up special in the wrong direction? <laughs> Rest in peace. If you wanna do that less, you should practice B reversing your recovery. B reversing is when you use a special move and turn the stick away from where your character's facing, causing them to use their special in the other direction. With up specials, you can B reverse by holding your stick at a diagonal angle. 
Easy as this sounds, without practice, many players are super inconsistent and recover the wrong way or use a side special on accident. We have a simple drill to help avoid that shade. Just run off ledge and B reverse your up special back on. Then run to the other side, jump off the ledge and B reverse back on. Try and do this until you can get consistently five times in a row on each side. It's surprisingly important and surprisingly embarrassing to screw up. If you want to use time instead of repetitions, do this for five to 10 minutes. Oh, and this is only crucial for characters that have directional up specials. Olimars and Duck Hans need not to apply. If you want to learn even more wild stuff you can do with B-reversing, check out our video on that topic too. Now that we're done with the air, we're almost there. Truth be told, it's smash aerial complexity that throws most new players off. Ground movement is more common and intuitive, you know? The main tripping points off the ground game comes from laggy dashing and turning animations. There's a ton of complexity to ground movement too, but if you're starting out, you should focus on fox trotting and run-up tilts. In Ultimate, every character has an additional dash and a run, which have different animations and speeds. If you run, you also open up a lot of different animations, like a separate pivot animation, which is laggier than the pivot animation for the initial dash. So to avoid laggy animations, you can foxtrot, and you don't even have to play fox or even be a ballroom dancer. To foxtrot, you just dash and stop before your run animation hits. Physically, this looks like sliding and releasing the stick to the left or right. It's another quick, flicking motion with your thumb. Fox trotting makes your movement less laggy and more evasive. It's great when you're staring down your opponent and trying to get them to throw a move and miss. It's also really good on certain characters like Falco or Zero Suit Samus. To practice fox trotting, try to make it from one end of the stage to the other only using your initial dash. You can do simple dashes back and forth too. Either way, take five to 10 minutes to try fox trotting. Unlike dash dancing in Melee, the timing is pretty forgiving and this tech isn't too hard to pick up. Surprisingly, doing a run up tilt can be more difficult. When you enter into your dash, you'll do a dash attack unless you stop your momentum. A lot of dash attacks in this game are slow, laggy, and don't lead to kills or combos. While some dash attacks are good, <laughs> woof, <laughs> even the good dash attacks are situational. When you start on a smash, you'll probably dash attack a lot because it's easy. You just push the left stick toward your opponent and click A. To run up tilt, you have to move the stick, release it as you get near, then right as the dash animation stops, use a tilt. So, for the run up tilt drill, go to battlefield or training and start underneath one platform. Dash to the other platform and up tilt so that the up tilt hits mostly center. If this feels difficult at first, break the motion down so that you dash, stop, up tilt, then gradually speed up. If you can get it in the first few tries, work on consistently getting the tilt in the position. You can also practice by running up to the CPU and hitting a forward tilt, resetting when you accidentally get a dash attack. With some characters like Roy, you can have fun with this by running, four tilting, running, four tilting until you carry the CPU off the stage. Almost feels like a rhythm game. This is also a good way to put the idea of chasing down opponents in your head. Since using a tilt instead of a dash attack can challenge new players, give yourself a good 10 minutes with this drill. If it's dull, change the methods and tilts you use a bit. There's another method you can use to help the process too. It's called pivot canceling. And for once in Smash history, it's not as complex as it sounds. You run up the opponent, then flick your stick in the opposite direction, then hit the tilt. What this does is cancel your dash with a pivot, then cancel your pivot with a tilt. The timing window is tight, but honestly not even as tight as that freaking short hop window. You can build this into the drill pretty easily and use it if it feels right. For the final grounded drill, we have a simple cooldown. Practicing turnarounds. Smash is so fast and frantic that we forget how important the tiny baby touches can be. The turnaround often gets overlooked, but it can be huge. Basically, you can turn your character around without moving by gently nudging the stick in the opposite direction. This is really useful if someone whiffs a big attack and you have your back turned. You can turn around, then grab. Even though this seems so simple, you'll see top players drop this and miss a kill. So to practice it, spend five minutes turning around and around and around and around. Like with the short hop, start gentle and focus on accuracy, then speed up gradually. So let's review this list of exercises. Fast falling a full hop, five to 10 minutes. Fast falling an up special, five minutes. Short hop, 15 to 20 minutes. Running short hop, five minutes. Running and fast falling short hops, five to 10 minutes. Fast falling short hop aerials, 15 to 30 minutes. Short hop up airing under a platform, two to five minutes. Full hopping fast falling through a platform, two to five minutes. Land on and drop through a platform, two to five minutes. B reversing recovery, five to 10 minutes. Fox trot, five to 10 minutes. Run up pivot cancel tilts, 10 minutes. Turnarounds, five minutes.
Wow, <laughs> that is a lot of exercises. Even with the lower bound of time, you're looking at 81 minutes, nearly an hour and a half. So remember guys, you can always scale that time up or down and adjust to your strengths and weaknesses. Think you've got fox trotting down? Cut it from the regular routine and practice it occasionally. Think you really need to work on short hop aerials? Give them more time. Practice looking too long? Break it into air only and ground only practice. If time is money, then everyone's budget looks different. Some of us can spend hours on Smash and others can take like 30 minutes out of the day. So be sure to adjust the practice routine to what works for you and fits your life and goals. If you want to win EVO one day, then yeah, you're going to need to practice a lot. If you want to beat up your friends, you might not need to practice as much, like at all. If you want to build your own training regimen, then we got a video for that too. In the, yeah, you guessed it, description. That video also has great tips on how to practice effectively and efficiently no matter what drills you're using. All right, that's it for our beginner's practice routine. We hope it helps you catch up a bit because Smash is a beautiful language. I mean, game. <laughs> All right, I'm getting out of here before I mix another metaphor. But before I do, I need to remind you, of course, to subscribe to Pro Guides here on YouTube if you haven't yet. Practice watching our videos every day because I know you'll love them.